Good afternoon, and thank you for joining us for another episode of Condo Insider. Uh, my name is Jane Sugimura. I'm your host for this episode. And Condo Insider is, uh, our, is a weekly uh, show, and it's about condo living, and, and we deal with condo issues. And today, we're dealing with uh, Chapter 514B, Section 142. It's called Aging in Place. And those people who, who serve on boards of directors or who are property managers, uh, you, you, you may have run into some instances where you have elderly or disabled uh, people who live in your building and you know, they create situations that affect everybody else like hoarding or maybe you know, they can't uh, clean their units because of the disability or their age or you know, and, and you, you're, you're, you probably don't know what to do, but this section in the this, in this statute allows the association to contact a third party if the relatives of the person who lived in the unit, you know, uh, don't want to uh, get involved. And so, you know, the association is the one who usually, you know, calls somebody, but this, this statute lets them uh, intervene and try to get help. And it's important that, you know, that these people get help because if they don't, you know, hoarders who have newspaper and, and magazines and things, this is a fire hazard. And that's, that's just, you know, frightening when you live in a high rise that you've got a hoarder in the building. And, you know, if, if people don't take care of themselves or they can't take care of themselves, you end up with uh, bugs and vermin and everything else that could affect other people who live in the building. So it's really important that, you know, we uh, who live in condominiums can deal with this. And today we have on our show, uh, we're gonna have, his, his, we have uh, Mark Salazar, who is the CEO and uh, president of a, a company called Venser Health Technologies. Uh, hi, Mark. Hey, how are thank you? Thank you for joining us. Uh, thank you for thank having me Thank you for me joining on. us today. Thank you for having us on, for uh, having me on. Yeah, and Mark, Mark's company, you know, has, and we're going to be talking about it later on, but he, they've got an app uh, where people, you know, if you're a relative of, of this person who's living in a condominium, who's having trouble uh, taking care of themselves, this app will allow family members to help remotely. But before we get to the app, tell me about the company, Mark. What does your company do? Yeah, so um, the app Venser Health Technologies is a mobile platform where we uh, recruit providers uh, to be independent contractors uh, to provide healthcare, home medical or healthcare services uh, directed to clients. Uh, and they operate as independent contractors. So you can uh, request their services at any time, uh, basically. And that's our entire platform. We want to connect um, clients and their family members to providers uh, uh, that are looking for, um, you know, clients and family members are looking for services to providers who are willing uh, to provide that services. And our goal is actually to go 24-7, uh, like, you know, all those on-demand apps like Uber and Lyft, we kind of follow that same model. Uh, why can't you order a uh, healthcare worker or a healthcare services provider anytime you need for yourself or for your family member? And so that's kind of our goal is to make uh, life easier for people so families can just be families and not be you know worried about caregiving uh, for anyone uh, that they know or have to ha uh, have to face that stress uh, when they can't address it themselves so our, we're hoping that uh, our goal for Venser Health is to kind of make that uh, an accessible thing to uh, the general public. Okay well, why don't you tell me something about yourself I mean what is your background? Yeah um, I'm actually from Hawaii uh, I moved to San Francisco in 2009. Um, I'm actually from Waipahu. Uh, my parents currently live in Eva Beach. Uh, and so I graduated from Waipahu High School. I got my degree in psychology from the University of Hawaii, uh, West Oahu. Uh, and then I moved to uh, San Francisco in 2009. Uh, you know, I, I work at the Mental Health Association of San Francisco. I'm currently the executive director there. And at, my, at that job, uh, we, what we do is provide peer support uh, for mental health services. So anyone looking for, you know, mental health support or anything like that, we have peer counseling. Uh, we also run uh, the California Peer Run Warm Line. It's like the largest 
uh, peer support warm line in the nation. Uh, and that runs 24-7, 365. Uh, we take on about eight to 10,000 calls per month, uh, calls and chats. So it's pretty cool uh, work. You know, we support the people of California, especially during COVID-19. You know, we, we always like to say, you know, uh, no, if no one's there for you, the California warm line is there for you. Um, and also, like you mentioned earlier, I have also a pretty uh, extensive background in hoarding uh, disorder work. I actually ran a program uh, with the Mental Health Association of San Francisco for about five years, focusing on uh, the topic you mentioned, hoarding disorder and the challenges around it that both not only individuals and their families face, but also, you know, their surrounding neighbors, uh, the you know, people like in the condo association or healthcare and uh, environmental uh, code and all that stuff. So I kind of have some background in that. So it was interesting that you brought that up. That's kind of some of my familiarities with. Um, uh, so that's kind of my work. Uh, on top of that, I just got uh, my master's, well, not just got, but I received my master's degree uh, from USC in health, uh, in health administration uh, last year. Uh, so yeah, that's what I do. Thanks for having me on. Yeah, and uh, with your company, the service that you offer, uh, do you offer it in any other, I mean, you're, you're offering it in Hawaii, and right now you have uh, healthcare providers all lined up, right? Yeah, exactly. We do have uh, about 30 uh, to 40 healthcare providers ready to go. Uh, right now, we're just seeking clients who want to test it with us. So we're in the beta testing phase in Honolulu. Uh, we're actually giving five hours for the you know free, for, uh, for the first five hours, we're going to give that free to any client that signs up. So if you're a family member or, you know, a condo association looking for some extra work and, you know, you want to help us kind of test the app and, and get services going to the people that need it, you know, you get free, uh, they, people can get free uh, five hours of service uh, for, you know, for the next, I believe, 20 or 30 people that sign up. We're, we're, uh, we're doing that in Hawaii only. Uh, but at the same time, we are looking to expand into Las Vegas, uh, San Francisco Bay Area, and actually Guam. Okay, and these healthcare providers that, that you, you've got lined up, what, I mean, what is their background? Are they nurses? Are they healthcare workers? Or yeah. I mean, what, 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 kind of, what kind of people have you got lined up? So the people that have, uh, we're recruiting for are actually certified nurse aides and uh, registered nurses. So we do have a balance of both. Uh, currently, the services are focused on respite care services. So the minimum qualification is uh, CNA and you need to be licensed. Uh, it has to be current uh, within the state of Hawaii. You know, if they're operating here, uh, they must operate as independent contractors themselves. And uh, I mean, in addition to that, we also verify them. So we do independent verification on our end that their license is, uh, is current. And then we also uh, background check everybody that comes through the app to ensure that, you know, they, they, they are saying who they say they are and, you know, they don't have any uh, 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 high profile things in, in their background. So we kind of make sure that uh, all providers are background checked when they get on the app. Okay. And, you know, and you said that, you know, these people are nurses or maybe healthcare workers. What if the kind of service that, you know, these people uh, are calling about is they just want somebody to come and help mom get dressed in the morning or maybe you know, cook some meals. So it doesn't require like a nursing certificate. Do you have people like that on your or list of yeah, providers? I, I, so that's one of the things that we're trying to focus on at this point, uh, personal hygiene <sighs> stuff, you know, helping mom, dad, grandma, grandpa kind of, uh, uh, address the daily living stuff. So if meals are prepped, you can help them feed meals, medication reminders, some light housekeeping also, um, moving around the home. If somebody needs to you know, be pushed in a wheelchair or something, they can help them move around the home. Um, toileting if needed, bathing, showering, uh, light housekeeping. There is some restrictions within you know, uh, at various statutes where you know, some CNAs or RNs can't do particular things. So you know, we have to double check uh, normally in what statute, what people are allowed to do. So cooking may be one of those limited things uh, that a in-home healthcare worker can't do basically, um, but they can help prep that meal. If that meal is already kind of uh, prepared, they can help, you know, um, uh, uh, prepare it for them and just uh, hand it to them and serve them and stuff like that. So that that's one of those things. Um, 
there are, we are working on extending that to higher level needs, like you're mentioning feeding and stuff. There are statutes that we're working on to kind of get into that role so uh, people can uh, receive higher level care from registered nurses, uh, basically. You know, one thing too that, that you haven't mentioned is what if, you know, uh, somebody, you know, uh, what if mom and dad need prescription medicine? Do you have, I mean, do you have a, a provider who will run errands for them or take them to the doctors or, you know, drive them where they want to go? Or, I mean, is that part of the services that can be provided? Uh, that's actually something we're working on to integrate. There are statues that prevent that work uh, directly on an app like this. So there are limitations around it. Uh, like, you know, like you said, transporting people. Uh, there are a lot of regulations around that in the medical field. However, we are working on ways to integrate that. Uh, there are possible partners that we're trying to work with to address those. So, you know, medication delivery or uh, transportation to a physician or a clinic is something we truly want to get to. So we want to make this a, an all uh, one-stop shop for people when they need services. Uh, at this phase of the app, uh, there, it's primarily um, serving and providing uh, support to individuals in their home or their unit. Uh, and get, making sure that they can, you know, live safely within their homes themselves. Okay, and, and so um, let's say somebody was interested in your services, how would they contact you? Yeah, so it's pretty easy. Jump on our website, VenserHealth.com. That's V-E-N-C-E-R-H-E-L-T-H.com. Uh, there's a sign up right there. Just click the sign up and you'll get to a form, uh, you know, fill it out. One of our team members will get it and we'll, you know, we'll get a, an immediate response uh, and then we'll work with you on signing, uh, completing the sign up process. Because this is in beta, we're a little more involved at this early stage. We want to make sure your experience in signing up is, you know, is as easy as possible. So, um, you know, it takes a, a, maybe a, an extra step uh, at this stage, but going on VentureHealth.com, uh, we can help you sign up there. Okay, and, and how long have you guys been doing this? Uh, we actually just recently went live. So that's the cool thing. So we've been working on the app uh, development for the last uh, year or so, and we've been having different iterations. We're now only comfortable with the app at this stage to go testing. So, uh, you know, we've gone through <laughs> countless iterations of this app. And so we're comfortable with releasing it uh, and having it tested by the general public at this point. So fairly recently uh, that we've, we've been uh, doing this, Jane. Okay, uh, you know, we're getting close to the, uh, before we you know, get into more specific details, why don't we take a break? Why don't we take a break and it'll be a one minute break and when we come back and you're gonna tell me exactly how, uh, what, you know, how we go about using this app and we get help from mom and dad who live in a condominium, okay? Okay. Thank you and welcome back to Condo Insider. And today's program is about aging in place, uh, which is uh, 514B142 in, in the, uh, under Hawaii revised statutes. And my guest today is Mark Salazar of Venser Technology. Hi, we're back, Mark. How are you? Good, how are you? Now we're gonna get into the, 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 the bone, meats and bones of this thing. Uh, 
you're we're talking we were talking about an app okay and 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 for the people who are uh you know who are just joining us this is an app that's available uh for people who want to take care of their uh of mom and dad grandpa or auntie you know auntie and who lives in a condominium and you can do it you don't even have to live in hawaii to do this right exactly you can live in another state if you want uh, another country if you need to and that's like the beauty of this app like you know it's meant for family caregivers to get respite care for themselves if they live with the parents or you know relative but it all it's also meant for caregivers that you know care remotely so that term remote caregiving is applicable here as well if somebody lives you know like me i live in in, in the san francisco bay area and uh, if I have to take care of my mom, I would use an app like this where I can remotely order um, health, uh, home health services for my mom or dad uh, when, I, when they need it. So it, it, it is actually meant for people who want to help their uh, family members that live in condos uh, who are independently living there. And it, it, and it, and it would be applicable for people, let, let's say you're just a real busy person who lives in Honolulu and you have three kids and a full-time job. And now you got to take care of mom and dad. And so, and you know, you, you just can't, you know, you just don't have the time to go running over to the condo, right? And so if, if, if you, you know, if they need services that you can't physically provide for them, you can sign up for this app and have them, uh, have the service providers go to um, uh, the condo and, and provide these services, right? Yeah, that's that's a, that's right on the money. That's exactly why this app was created. Um, a couple of my co-founders and early team members uh, were actually in that exact situation where they were, you know, parents full time, working full time, full time parents, and then they were dropped with the fact that they had to be caregivers for their parents, uh, and that's really difficult to do, right? And then on top of that, you have no idea where to start. There's stressors on top of it. You don't know who's coming in your home and all that stuff. And so uh, we developed that app specifically for what you said, Jane. It's perfectly why this app was made. It's to help reduce that stress uh, and to make sure that your mom, your dad, grandma, grandpa is, is taken care of when you can't run over to the condo. And how can, you know, for the people who are listening to this show today, how can you guarantee that the providers, you know, the, the, the providers that you, you know, that are participating on the app, the people who are going to go into mom and dad's condo, that they're that they're legit, that they're safe. Yeah. I mean, how do you how do you guarantee that to the people who are using this service? Yeah, I mean, I think like I mentioned earlier, uh, we ver we verify every provider that comes on board. Uh, we ask for documentation. We make sure that you know uh, their licenses are all current. And then, as I mentioned, we run a background check. It's a mandatory background check for any provider coming onto the app. So they must respond to that. And that's the only way their names get to be added to our mobile registry of service providers. So um, that's, that's the best way we could do it. Uh, and, and that's kind of the best recommendations we got from security experts as well. So you know, we're following all the, the steps uh, recommended to us by security um, officials. OK, so when, when somebody calls you, uh, you know, how do they, uh, you know, how can they sign up for these services? How do they do yeah. that? How do they sign up for these services? So, so again, um, go online, ventorhelp.com. So it's, it's, it's a pretty simple process. Um, you sign up, you know, uh, get an application, some complete the application, you know, fill out the information, and then you get a notice from us to download the app, actually. So uh, download the app, complete, um, you know, the registration process uh, or the sign up process for the app itself. Uh, and then when you're ready, you, you know, you just basically sign on. So you si open the app, uh, you you sign on, um, you pick your services that you need at this point. Um, it's companion care, medication reminders, um, in-home mobility, as I mentioned, some light housekeeping. So, you know, they're not housekeepers or anything, but they will clean up the place just a little bit so the person can leave in, you know, live in decent uh, living conditions. Um, they will uh, assist with serving prepared meals. So they, if they have prepared meals for them, they'll ser help serve that. Um, personal hygiene, you know, brushing your toothbrush, putting on clothes, that kind of stuff, uh, bathing, showering, uh, and toileting if necessary. So uh, you select that, you know, select the services that you need. Um, 
once you do that, our algorithm uh, so it matches you with a provider in the area um, that can actually has that experience to provide those services uh, that you're asking for. And it's an algorithm based on location, this, you know, uh, distance, fees, and all that stuff as well. Um, and then when you're ready to order it, after you select your provider, you can actually, so there's two great options. You can order it on demand, like an Uber or a Lyft to say, hey, I want it in 30 minutes. Cool, they'll come in 30 minutes. Uh, but then you can also schedule it uh, in advance. It, you know, it doesn't have to be the next 30 minutes or so. It can be the next four or five hours, or it could be tomorrow, the next day, or next week. You know, you can schedule ahead, which is a great part about it. Um, and then if, you know, if you're getting care, you know, you'll get notifications that the, the provider is on their way. Uh, if you're doing it on demand, you'll get a notification that they're on your way to the house today. If it's next week, you'll get reminders that you've have scheduled services. Um, once that's all done, you know, you, you know, you get your, your parent or grandparent gets that, gets those services. Uh, the cool thing is both the provider and the client receiving the services or the family member um, can rate one another. So if, if the provider isn't providing high quality services and you've been told that as a family member, you can actually note that and say, hey, this provider mistreated my grandma or grandpa. You know, this is not the best provider out there. And that creates transparency for people, right? It holds these providers accountable at the same time. Uh, on the other end, as a provider, you also see, you know, you can kind of let other providers know, like if you've had challenges with this uh, individual, like, hey, you know, some things to note about this person, they have X, Y, and Z, they may have dementia or Alzheimer's or anything like that. Uh, it kind of gives them a heads up and so they understand what they're walking into uh, as well. So it's it's a fairly intricate process, but it's actually a simple process to go through. And so when people uh, uh, you know, sign up for services, can you say, I want somebody to come three days a week from nine to 12 or, you know, can you do that? Yeah, you can definitely do that. You can do block scheduling. That's pretty cool about it as well. So we wanted to make sure that, you know, there are people who need the services in a pinch. Uh, you know, I got to go to the store for 30 minutes to an hour. I need somebody here in the next 20 minutes. That can happen. Um, you can say, oh, I'm going, you know, I'm, I need to go back to the office uh, for three days next week. I need somebody to come in in that time. You can also do that as well. Okay, and so before they sign up and, and, and sign up for your services, is there a way that, I mean, do you have like a schedule of fees that you charge, you know, for, for these providers that um, pe people so, can look at before they start ordering services? Yeah, so the, the great thing with this platform, they're all independent providers, so we can't set those fees uh, technically. Uh, we do tell people, you know, uh, the, we provide people the market rates for these types of services. So when you go on the app, it'll tell you like market rate is, you know, X dollars. Uh, and that's however you want to measure that against the current provider's fees, the provider sets their own rates. So a provider can set it a little higher in the area or they can set it a little lower. So it really depends. Um, at this stage, most providers are putting uh, between uh, $15 an hour to about $25 an hour. Just depends on the provider and the experience and what they're putting on. Okay, and then once the once once the uh, you know you you set up the the request and and you you know, you select the services, how do you pay for this? It's all electronic. There's no cash exchange. Um, you sign up if you have a credit card and an iPhone at this stage. Uh, yeah, everything is all electronic. We will never allow um, uh, cash to be exchanged. So it protects both you know the individual and the provider at the same time. So you know there's there's no threat about. Uh, cash being exchanged within the, the transaction. So when you sign up to create an account, you 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 have to give a credit card. Yeah, you do, and it's a secured credit uh, card process as well. It's third party um, and it's encrypted and everything you need to uh, know. It our provider is called Stripe, uh, and they are a very trusted um, third party uh, payment pro processor. Okay, how safe is Vencer? How safe is the app? It, it's pretty safe. Again, we have security um, officials on our team. We have medical doctors on our team. If you go on our website, you'll, uh, you can read about our board members and advisors. There's um, physicians, uh, cybersecurity experts. Um, so 
oh, and nurses and CNAs as well. So, you know, we we have a, a full set of team verifying everything we're doing, making sure uh, it's safe for both the clients and the providers participating in this. You mentioned, you know, earlier on that you had some experience, you know, uh, with hoarding. And, you know, we know that, that there's probably, I mean, this is a psychological disorder, isn't it? If people yeah, it, engage in hoarding. Yeah, that's, that's not something, typically... That's why it's so difficult to deal with, isn't it? Yeah, it's a long, so I think a lot of the misconceptions around hoarding is that it's an easy fix for people. It, 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 I think what they've seen on TV is that you just clean up somebody's home and ta-da, it's fixed. Um, actually, in reality, when you know the programs that we've done, uh, real transformation and, and support uh, actually takes, it could take months to years to get to a point where they can actually continue to live independently. Um, there are instances where their physical disabilities um, may be the cause. It's not necessarily a mental health disorder, it's just physical challenges. Uh, sometimes you can't lift boxes or take out the trash. So it really does vary depending on the individual. But I think one of the misconceptions is that, you know, people are lazy or whatever it is, but it's actually a mental health uh, disorder where people are, you know, experiencing from either trauma or any other um, issue that they may have related to that hoarding disorder. It could be anxiety, it could be anything else. So uh, I think that's what, that, that's the message that needs to be sent out, that it's not a quick fix. Uh, actually cleaning up somebody's home without their permission is actually more detrimental uh, than actually providing them service throughout a process. Uh, there have been cases of people um, uh, dying by suicide because they come to a home where their home was actually gutted uh, without their permission. So it's always, we always recommend an interactive process, an inclusive process with the individual that you're providing services to. Well, you know, a, a lot of, a lot of situations that affect condominiums, you know, really, you know, are hoarders. And is this, a, is this a situation that you have providers that can deal with hoarders? Um, I would, that's actually a very specialized type of service. Um, you know, the, it does require extra training. It does ex require extra support services. So if, you know, if the condo association and property managers want to get into that work to make sure people are safe in their own home, it does take a lot of planning and it, they have to be really thoughtful in how they want to go about it. Um, so it, it requires well, that might be training. something. Yeah, that might be something you might want to add to your list of providers, because if you have somebody who can deal with a hoarder, I think that's a service that, you know, and, and, and it's, it's more widespread than you would think. And it yeah. is a very huge problem in a condominium because number one, it's a fire hazard. Uh, it's a date, you know, it creates a danger to the person who's living in the unit and the people who live, you know, next to that person yeah and it creates a situation where you've got bugs and you know it's just so unhealthy and you know and and it, and it's a terrible situation and and we had one in our building yeah. and i mean and i can tell you it was just a horrendous situation you know and it took a whole lot of people to address it yeah. and that's it's when i found out that you can't just go in with a bunch of people and clean out the unit i mean because yeah. it just doesn't work that way it doesn't and work so, exactly. So, I mean, if you could add that to your list of providers, I, I, I guarantee you, I mean, you will, you know, you will probably get a bunch of phone calls. <laughs> um, actually, I, I, for this, those types of situations, actually, there are specialized people that do that. Uh, I would recommend more towards mental health services uh, than providers per se in this type of situation. They're, they, if, if properly trained, they can actually support a person uh, and get them through some services uh, uh, to kind of improve their living situation. So, um, I, you know, this is a short conversation. There is a lot to unpack around hoarding and, and cluttering. And I think, you know, I'd love to have that conversation. Uh, yeah, I mean, there, there's a lot of things to unpack with this type of situation, uh, and especially for property managers, because there is a balance uh, when working with individuals or helping people uh, who have this challenge. Right. Well, we've kind of run out of time. So me, but, you know, I'd like to, you know, have you back on the show in a couple of months to see how you guys have been doing 
uh, and and see if we can you know help get you into more homes so that uh, you can help people take care of their elderly uh, relatives who live in condominiums because I mean that's a service uh, not only to the people you know who live in the condominiums but to everybody else who lives in the building. It's just you know something that you know needs to be done uh, because you know we all live in this one community. And, uh, and, and when you've got one person who's kind of having some, you know, tough issues, you know, we, they, they need all the help that they can get. And so, you know, your, uh, I, I look on your company as a resource, you know, for the condominium managers and boards and people, you know, who have families who live in condos. So thank you very much for being on our show today. Thank you so much for having us on, Jane. And yeah, like I was mentioning earlier, you know, we're giving away the first five hours for the next 20 uh, people that uh, sign up. And again, we are a resource for everybody. Even though we're an early stage company, you know, we want to help people um, just live normal lives. It's, it is a challenge and families can't be there 24 seven. And we're hoping uh, that Bensar Health uh, can be there to support you, you know, continue just being family members and not just caregivers. So again, uh, if people, you know, visit BensarHealth.com, uh, all your information is there. Okay, well, thank you again. And thank you all for uh, joining us in this episode of Condo Insider. And please make sure that you uh, tune in next week, Thursday, for another episode on other issues dealing with condominium living. Thank you and mahalo.